I have a problem. I cannot get up in the morning. I've tried it all. I set five alarm clocks on my phone, done all the goofy little gizmos and gadgets. None of them seem to work. So, there's only one thing to do now. And that's to get up and make something that will work. I'm the Methodical Maker, and today we're going to be making a smart alarm clock that has way more features than anything else in the market and actually works at getting me up. That's right. <laughs> All right, so I'm no artist, but here's the plan. I got my bed and I got me in it, right? I got my end table next to me. So what if I put a pool noodle on my end table and hook it up to this motor here? So when my alarm goes off, this pool noodle will swing over and hit me in the face. I have a habit of waking up, turning my alarm clock off and going back into bed. So I also plan on adding a pressure sensor underneath the bed. So if I do get back into bed, the alarm clock will just start swinging again. And as soon as I get up, it'll stop. So that's the plan. Let's design this up and let's get building. So to get started, we need to take some measurements off of this end table. We don't need all of them, just the important ones. A little bit of that recess on the side there, the overhang of the top, and how much space I have above the drawer. With the measurements taken and jotted down in my notebook, I can start getting to designing. To start, I made the important features of the end table from the measurements I took. I then made this base plate that everything will mount to. This has a notch to fit over the leg that juts out. I then grabbed this motor and planetary gearbox from GrabCAD. It's a great place to find models of parts for projects. The gearbox has a center shaft that attaches the motor, and then these smaller yellow planet gears interface between the center shaft and the outer housing, which is shown in blue. I also need an end cap to hold a bearing, which keeps all the components aligned. The end cap has a hole in it that allows the output shaft to pass through. There's a hook for the pool noodle to rest on. It also has a limit switch, which will home the pool noodle when it returns to its resting position. And then finally, there's this 90 degree bracket thing. This is what's going to attach the pool noodle to the motor shaft. Let's move on to the electronics. The mounting plate has a spot for a Raspberry Pi to mount. On top of that, there's going to be an extra large cover. That's because there's going to be a stepper motor shield and some other stuff in there. Well, with the designing done, I think it's about time to fire up the 3D printer, get to printing, and then, well, let's start assembling it. So the 3D prints turned out amazing. Now, if your supports are not this easy to remove, I highly recommend that you treat each and every single print that you do as a testing thing to tune your supports because supports are amazing and you should love using them and not hate them. So that's my PSA for this video. Whoa, stop, stop, stop. Look, this isn't actually a build video. The project bits on the workbench right now. There's like no infill in them. What's going on? Well, uh, jump back to the first clip. The alarm clock's already built. This is a repair video, not a build video. Yeah, that's right. The alarm clock, mm, pretty good, works pretty good. But printing it all in PLA was a mistake. So I have a few new parts that are made with polycarbonate. I'm gonna be putting those on the alarm clock already in the bedroom. The initial idea was to just build a new one and film it and make it look like it was a new project. But the motor that I have is a different size, so it doesn't fit on the new alarm clock. And it being an alarm clock, if I take it off my bed to build a new one, then I can't wake up. So gonna go to the bedroom, gonna install the new parts. We're gonna pretend like it's a new project. It's all good, it's all good, it's all good. It's gonna work, it's gonna be good, good, it's good. Okay, so with that continuity catastrophe carefully clarified, we can move on to the project as it currently stands. We have the pool noodle and the limit switch. The pool noodle is wrapped in gaff tape because my cat loves to eat foam. It's connected to the 90 degree adapter and that then connects the motor. Here we can see the first thing that needs fixing. The outer gearbox housing is cracked apart, which is getting lube all over the side of my end table. Opening up the gearbox, we can see the next problem. Taking out this center hub, you can see the white part in the middle. Uh, that's not supposed to be there. That's from the shaft that sits on the motor. The plastic completely snapped, which meant that the gearbox just stopped working completely. I pulled the broken shaft off of the motor because we're gonna have to take that out to replace the outer housing of the gearbox. I didn't get it on camera, but the initial housing was so damaged that as I tried taking it apart, it literally crumbled. You can see how cracked it is. Well, with that off, I can install the new one. I made these little through holes so I can just stick my Allen key on and get these uh, cap head screws in real easy. With that, just a little bit of percussive maintenance. And with that, the motor shaft's back on. The secret to having 3D printed gearboxes last is to make sure you lubricate them. I'm just using some silicone super lube. I really struggled getting the planet gears and the carrier back in, so I'll just fast forward through all of that. With that, I can press this nut in, and then I can screw the gearbox cover into the rest of the gearbox. And with the gearbox cover on, the only thing left to do is reattach the pool noodle, and that's it. The mechanics of the project are pretty much all done. So with that, let's move over to the electrical. 
To be honest, the electrical is pretty simple. It's just a stepper motor board that sits on top of a Raspberry Pi. Because the shield takes over all of the GPIO, I also made this little circuit board. It just acts like a hub for all the switches and pressure sensor to connect into, so that way if the stepper motor board fries, I don't have as much problems rewiring it. As far as the code, it comes down to two components. There's a library that controls the stepper board and then the code that actually does the alarm stuff. I'm pretty sure I got the library to control the board from the manufacturer's website, Waveshare. Uh, if I was to do it again, I'd use an actual microcontroller that can talk like I2C. Their library does a thing called bit banging, which is basically where it sets the GPIO on the board high and low, which can be affected by system timing. Not ideal. Just pause the video if you want to see all the code, I'm only going to cover the important bits. So for this next part, ignore all the stuff up top here where it says boring stuff, we're only going to be looking at the bottom section. So the pressure sensor that I put under my bed is basically a variable resistor. And that's slightly problematic, because the Raspberry Pi doesn't have an ADC, which is how you read analog values on a microcontroller. Ideally I should have used something like an ESP32 that does have an ADC and also has Wi-Fi, but I didn't know that at the time. Okay, so we can't read analog values, only digital values, ones and zeros. So what do we do? Well, we can put a capacitor in line with our variable resistor, our pressure sensor. And a capacitor is basically like a little bucket that fills up with voltage. So we can turn on a tap that lets some voltage through that will pass through our variable resistor, which will speed up or slow down the flow depending on the resistance. That voltage then builds up in the bucket and we can look at the bucket to see how long it takes for the bucket to fill up. More pressure on the pressure sensor means lower resistance, which means the bucket fills up faster. It looks like our bucket's pretty close to getting full. At this point, we've detected that the bucket's full, and we can move on to the next part, which is emptying out the bucket and doing it all over again. We do this 50 times, storing the value each time. We then average those together, and then we compare that to some threshold value. If the time it takes is lower than the threshold, that means someone's in bed. And if it took longer, then it's probably just the weight of the mattress. We have some more boring code, like connecting to my smart home and the functions to define the movement of the arm, but then we get to the real meat of it. Basically, we keep track of the previous state and the current state. If they differ, then we want to log it and say that something's changed. We do that locally, but we also send that status over MQTT, which goes to my smart home, and that's useful for a few reasons. For instance, at night, when I get in bed, my smart home will automatically turn off all of my lights. And this last part at the bottom is where it really all comes together. Basically, if I'm in bed and the alarm is set to be armed, well, then it calls the function that starts slapping me in the face with a pool noodle. Easy as that. Moving on to the smart home stuff, I use Home Assistant as my main dashboard, but I do all of my logic in Node-RED. So on my dashboard I just have a status for if I'm in bed, that's used for debugging, and a toggle button for if the alarm should go off on the weekends. Moving on to Node-RED, the first thing we need to do is look at my phone alarm. I'll look at the next time it's supposed to go off, and that is when this alarm clock is based around. No annoying UI or anything, literally just the alarms app on my cell phone. Next up, I look to see if my phone is on the home Wi-Fi. If it's not, I'm probably out traveling or something, and if my significant other is still at home, I don't want my alarm clock going off and waking them up. This is especially important because it looks at my phone's alarm clock time, so if I'm in a different time zone, that might be way early for them. After that, I check to see if that alarm on weekends button is pressed, that way I can easily turn on and off if the big alarm clock should go off on the weekends. Okay, if we've made it this far, it's time to actually start the alarm. The first thing we'll do is gradually turn on my bedroom lamp. Simultaneously, we'll start a 75 second timer. After those 75 seconds are up, then we'll send the armed command over MQTT. This will activate the alarm clock. I also start up another 30 minute timer. After those 30 minutes, we'll send the disarmed command over MQTT. There is no snooze button. There's no off button. If I get up and then I get back in bed within those 30 minutes, it'll just go off again. All right, well, with all that, let's set an alarm and see if it can actually wake me up. Yeah, so that's pretty jarring, you know? Doesn't hurt, but definitely gets you up. And sure, I could roll to the other side of my bed and just pretend like, you know, it's not gonna hit me anymore. But I made this. I made a promise to myself that when my alarm goes off, I'll get up. And that's what a lot of alarm clocks were missing. They just go off and then you can hit snooze. I didn't make this. 
It was just on my phone. Why am I going to listen to that? I'll definitely listen to this. Hey, thanks for watching till the end. Really hope you enjoy this goofy project. I don't expect many people to try to replicate it, but if you want to, go for it. I had a lot of fun making it. Really, this video was to show that you can have goofy ideas and you can decide to make whatever you want. The world really is your oyster. These, you know, 3D printers, step promoters, microcontrollers, they're so cheap nowadays that there really isn't much reason to not just try to go for it. I didn't know how to wire up a Raspberry Pi to interface with hardware at the beginning of this project. That's something that I had to learn along the way. And if you decide to make something, you're also gonna have challenges that you're gonna face. Uh, but if you persevere, you stick through, you try to figure out how to solve those challenges, I guarantee you the result you'll get in the end, well worth it. It's very rewarding. And every time I wake up, I get to look over and say, yeah, I made my alarm clock. Maybe it's not the most badass thing uh, to make, but I really enjoy it. You know, it's a great way to start my day looking over and seeing something that I poured my heart and soul into. Hopefully, you can figure out a project that gives you the same sense of accomplishment. As for the videos, my New Year's resolution is to do one video a month. I have some pretty big projects I'm working on right now, so that might slip. It might not be one video exactly every month, but I plan on having 12 videos. If you look forward to seeing the other stuff I'm working on, you know, maybe go ahead, uh, subscribe to the channel, or just leave a comment. I always try to be active in the comments. If you're giving good comments, I'll try to give a good reply. So that being said, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day.